Welcome back to even more news, the first and only news podcast. And I'm fairly confident the only show putting out a reaction as fast as we're putting it out. Am mm-hmm. I right? I think Especially we're the only show. Especially since there's no other shows. Yeah, I think we're the only show. Yeah. So who else could be doing it? I'm Katie Stoll. Hi, Katie. Hi. I'm Cody Johnston. Cody Johnston. Jonathan, also here. If That's what I know about not, him. Always. Hi. Hello. There he cheers. is. Here he is. Hey, cheers, y'all. Cheers to America. America. The brave and the bold and the beautiful. And the batshit. A little housekeeping. Eagle-eyed viewers will notice that this podcast episode, even more news, is coming out before some more news this week. And that is because we had ourselves a debate, y'all. And now we're going to record our show tonight, Tuesday. So, yeah, we are. Don't worry. Some more news will be coming out this week. Yes, it will. Um, It is prepared. It'll probably be a bit of a companion to this uh, particular episode of the podcast Mm -hmm. because we kind of discussed the DNC and the um, the vibes of it all. He's saying probably, but that is what will be happening later this week. Yeah, I know. I I know what we filmed and uh, wrote and filmed and edited and Mm -hmm. will be releasing. I do too. It is exactly what I just described. So before we get into it, we all have a beverage this evening. It's true. We all decided that we would enjoy our own beverage, debate things. Gotta enjoy something. Gotta enjoy something. And that we would save our drink. For the show. So, boys, please, I'm dying to know. What have you been jo- enjoying all evening? Well, I made a, um, I made a, a, a tropical uh, mixture of mm. uh, rum and pineapple mango juice. And uh, I gave it a couple different names. I call it a pina, whatever makes sense. Um, okay. <laughs> and uh, uh, the late, great Hannibal Nectar. Oh, very delicious. good. Very good. Sounds delicious. That does sound delicious. A Ooh. nice glass of Ooh. candy. It's very refreshing. In refreshing. It's hot, hot room. I'm having a whisk she sour. Okay. Snaps. Good job. Thank That's you, good. Cody. Thank you're wel- you. You're, you're welcome. Thank you. Katie, wait. Thank you. Th- okay. Well, wait, a little more. Who Katie, are you, thanking? you, th- you thank me too. You thank me? Thanks. You're welcome. You. <laughs> it's called being an ally and. I think that's the perfect Whisk way to do it. She sour. I mm-hmm. curled up inside a little bit. Yeah. That's just because it's the so sour. nice and warm in there. It's, yeah, and it's warm in there. Right. Um, that was really good. What are you having? Thank you. <laughs> I'm just waiting for. What are you having? I'm calling this cocktail "Riding Vibes." Ooh. It's just what, that's a, like more of a general debate theme. Uh, yeah. This is a, a standard vodka soda. But with ah. a whole bunch of frozen berries in my mushroom glass that was given to me as a birthday present from my friend Eli, who is also a fan Eli of the Musk? show. Eli Musk? Eli No, that's Elon. Eli, you love Eli. Eli, if you're listening, Eli. I'm so, I'm oh, so I've been sorry. Saying it He's going to be so horrified. I know. I'm so, I'm so sorry. Everybody <laughs> apologize to Eli, I guess. I'm sorry. Well, we did it, y'all. We had another debate. I mean, we specifically, we all had that debate. We watched it, yeah. We definitely watched it. We watched it together. This we got one through it. felt much better than the last one. She didn't do the thing. She didn't do the thing that he did. He, she didn't do that. She which had was to... like lose her train of thought and stare off into the space for 30 seconds. And he did the thing that he does. He did the thing that he does. Yeah, exactly. And I do think that the main story of this evening is that he did the thing that he does. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's the thing. Like, uh, you know, she didn't do spectacularly. Um, he did exactly what you would expect. Um, we get into this again in our ep- other episode of the show uh, later this week. A lot of stuff she said was like fine. And a lot of it was like frustrating to see. And a lot of it was like, oh, yeah. so the same, same as it ever was. Same as it ever was. Same as it ever was. Sorry. The Gaza Israel stuff was like not uh, helpful to hear. It was nothing new. It was just just platitude after platitude uh, saying basically nothing. And, you know, yeah, like even some answers she gave were like, well, that's not what they asked. You definitely prepared this specific thing to say. She didn't get rattled by him, which is in terms of what I think a lot of people on the other side might be looking for. 
would be to see her get rattled by him in some capacity. Sure. So she definitely held her own up there. Um, but yeah, I, I still feel very blah about. Yeah, even I mean, even like you know, you talk about like, president. don't talk about like what you've done, talk about what you're gonna do. Even, but even like the first question was about like, are you better off? And it seemed like a really great opportunity at the very very beginning to preempt sort of like what he's going to say um and actually like talk about like well we did this we did this we did this we started we started from the pandemic and now we're here and like jobs unemployment all this kind of stuff um but she kind of like talked really vaguely about like what she kind of would do and how like she has this idea of like an opportunity economy which i'm sure we'll hear a lot of more in the future it's a nice phrase yeah it's a good it's a solid phrase it also uh stops uh a lot of the um i guess the anti-woke people uh about opportunity of outcome she's not saying an outcome economy it's an opportunity economy um so it's, yeah it's fine but i i kind of wish at the beginning she was like yeah this is how we started and here's where we're ending so yes you're better off than when we got elected Right. Um, but that's like, like I would love know. to see a politician be able to say, like, I understand that you are hurting at home. Um, I understand that um, I am paying attention to that. It's hard to see it sometimes. But look, I, I, maybe that's a waste of words. But that energy at all, like and like instead of just blowing past even the concept that people have had a hard time. And like, I know we all have our different thoughts, but at the end of the day, that's what people feel at home. Uh, while they're watching this, I feel like and she kind of did. Do I guess that a she kind of did, but I feel like this debate, or what she intended to do with the debate, was not really for us. You know, she came in with a mission. That mission is most people have made up their minds. There is a sliver of undecided voters who are either Trump or nobody, and there's a sliver of undecided voters who are either Kamala Harris or nobody. And I think she wanted to win some of those people on one side who are gettable to vote for her and let Trump do his thing so that the people that he could lose, that he would lose, who maybe forgot what that was all about. And I think she did that job. She set trap after trap for him. Like, she ran the same play seven or eight times, and he, like, she was Lucy with the football. Every single time. And he tried to, he kicked it every time. He flew in the air every time she baited him with central park five and he took it she i mean the she baited him on crowd sizes he mm -hmm. dove into yeah. that one so and like so i agree with you guys i it's like it's not like i heard every policy platform i want to hear but i think she came in saying like here's what i need to do to like move the needle a little bit more and stop these poles from maybe slipping yeah and attack like I said, this it's thing. not for us um well yeah i just have two minds and i think that that's going to be the story of this entire process for me where it's like i see that i hear you i understand that i have different inputs as to what i think would move the needle for those undecided voters but i'm not claiming to be right about that or knowing because i think anybody who's saying that they're positive about any outcome is a real fucking idiot but at the same time, every time we go, th we see her, we have an event where we're watching her speak, where we're watching the DNC, the, the interview. It's like I'm making that excuse. And when we talk about the opportunity economy, that's like one of the main takeaways I've got from this whole evening. There are other things, of course, but that was like the, the big one. And I'm like, oh, that's not a bad thing to talk about. And I think that those are some good specifics, a $6,000 child tax credit. I love that. That's wonderful. Um, you know, incentivizing small businesses, um, incentivizing first-time home buyers. I love all of that, but I do uh, just kind of let down in general. Not let down. Uh, I want to be really careful with my words. Um, I just feel ignored, maybe. <laughs> yeah, well, that's... I mean, that's that's the that's the deal. That's, that's voting the for deal. Democrats. That's for just you. the um, deal you have to like, make <laughs> when you are like. I also acknowledge that she w did a great job. Uh, just to everything Jonathan said, she was Lucy with the football, pulling the football. There was one moment where this was highlighted for me. She Lucy with the 
footballed him, but also in the context of answering a direct question of uh, why did you guys tank the immigration bill? Because when I bring that up in conversations with people that disagree with me, they're like, you're just falling for the line that this was all a political move in, you know, and I'm like, okay, tell me the reason why it's not a political move in service of the election. Just give me any explanation. But he was really yeah. distracted when he was asked that pointed question. He did not he respond. Was not, he didn't respond. He was distracted by, a, I'm pretty sure, crowd size Probably. taunt. <laughs> yeah. And so while it was effective, I really wanted to hear whatever that answer was. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, that's, I think, it's a, a trouble with, uh, with him specifically. Uh, debates generally because you, it's hard to lock people down mm -hmm. on, on specific questions because they have their preparation, the things that they want to say. Um, with him specifically, it, it you do want to distract him and make him look like a weirdo because um, it's easy and fun and maybe hopefully effective. But also you want him to have to have his like feet put to the fire and have him right. actually ask these questions and be like when he does go off the rails or doesn't address it, have the response be, OK, but the question was this. Why did you tank that um, is a and like, why do you influence the, the party to to tank it is a question that should have an answer at some point but i think you've um, got your answer katie because that is his answer yes He's like exactly well, we we all know we talked about this a week or two ago we all know why he did it of mm. course it's the political but thing. that is still he didn't throw yeah maybe he would have found some other thing to latch on to to worm out of the answer but those are <laughs> i yeah. but i want to see him deal with that moment but anyway yeah. but I, I you know i guess i'm just curious like how that would even affect because like i uh very much sympathize with like your your this plight of yours where you're like yeah i'm like talking to people and, and they're like but that's why do you it's because of the pet eating or whatever they say um and uh not being able and to just be like yeah he's lying he clearly this is what this was for i don't know what answer he would give that would convince them of either you know what I mean? Not like, even trying like, to convince anybody I, uh, in this pursuit. I I I give up on you that. You just wanted to I answer the question. Like, like yeah. answer the question. Like uh, on TV here, and be confronted with this question that is a valid question. It's a very valid question that he should be asked all the time until he answers it. <laughs> it wasn't um, just me, right? That he brought up. I, I mean, I knew he was going to because it's like his strong issue or whatever. But like. He, I think, went to that border immigration well a little bit too much. Like the whole night, every answer. Oh yeah, like irrelevant. He stuff. did last like, well, time too, though. In and, yeah, and I guess we were just distracted by <laughs> the yeah. train wreck. I mean, like I remember it, but it there was another story that loomed large that evening. <laughs> and that this is another thing I think before we even play this clip is that if you're not in the like right like most americans are probably not aware of what's been going on the last few days about how there was this rumor that haitian immigrants in springfield ohio were like stealing people's cats and eating them and jd van spread this thing and it was clearly and it's like one one american woman who like allegedly did that from some video that was being shared but it's actually like the thousands of haitians that live there is who's doing the eating of the cats and it's only been like a day and a half really it's like been if you like, think about like, like a week i was I, like he brought it up and i was like how could you pause? Like, how would you? Because it's on Truth this? Social, and he thinks that's what everyone's talking Social, about. Right. So it's this gibberish nonsense, and they're just all being racist. But like, he's bringing it up in this debate to an audience on uh, uh, ABC News, as if it's a thing that like my mom or your mom or anyone's mom would know about. And look at what's happening to the towns all over the United States, and a lot of towns don't want to talk. It's not going to be Aurora or Springfield. A lot of towns don't want to talk about it because they're so embarrassed by it. In Springfield, they're eating the dogs, the people that came in. They're eating the cats. They're eating, they're eating the pets of the people that live there. And this is what's happening in our country, and it's a shame. As if he cares about pets. Oh, yeah, the guy who's like, yeah, they, uh, they beat the crap out of him like a dog. <laughs> Like, they treated him poorly like a dog. Yeah, they the only, that guy really cares about them. The only ones to not have a pet. Oh, yeah. They don't, they don't I mean, care for animals in that, in that family. 
Mr. Um, Biden's dog. At least, at least Biden vicious, had a bunch of violent dogs. <laughs> violent, <laughs> yeah, a bunch, violent dogs. A bunch dog. of dogs that tried to eat people. <laughs> yeah, at least he had a bunch of poorly trained violent dogs instead of no like dogs at all. Like a normal American. Yeah, exactly. And there's nothing, like, there's no... We have the every time we do an episode about this, we have the moral panics episode. We talk about well, it starts with this kernel of truth and then blows out from here. There's nothing. There's here. nothing. They're here. just being racist. And JD Vance did it, and then uh, today he I, tweeted out like, "Well, uh, maybe uh, it might not be happening, but it, but the fact is that the fact people that believe it because gotta... of the thing." And that, like, and then keep sending your cat memes. I we can't. We can't keep going like this. We can't have this guy who's trying to be the vice president just be tweeting like based send send your cat memes for the yeah. meme war. We can't do this. We can't let this happen. He can't we can't have a a, a based like poster uh be the vice president. It's unpleasant. And he also is wrong and a liar, it's unpleasant. obviously. But uh it's so unpleasant. And like it's based just, you know. No. Stop it, JD. Stop it would be it. great. Maybe we we could split up president and vice president and just make that there's two jobs. There's one person to do the policy thing and to be the boring policy person and then the other person to go on the debate stage and just laugh when the candidate says they're eating all the dogs and they're cats. Eating all the dogs and what are you cats supposed to pets. say to that? I mean, you laugh, right? That's all she could do. Yeah. Like what like She gave great reactions all evening. Uh, she did. She knew that she would have to. And she was on oh. camera. She gave great reaction. Do you oh, think she, uh, Frank Luntz uh, put out a tweet that was uh, slightly uh, sexist? It was, on content, Harris is winning. Visually, she's hurting herself. Beg it to differ, uh, sir. Frank, shut up. He's our guest next week, though. Frank, oh, Frank you're, Luntz. welcome to the show, Frank Luntz. Ah, we have questions what, what's for your, you. What's, what, what's in your opinion, Frank? What's the most evil poll you've ever done? Um, <laughs> well, there God. are so many to choose from. Oh, oh, how could I? Um, do you think that people um, were really, really thrilled to find out that uh, people at Goldman Sachs think that <laughs> Trump would be bad for the economy? <laughs> Do you like, think they heard uh, Harris say that and be like, "Wow, I didn't, I didn't huh. know that." Goldman God. Sachs, you know, I mean, the people who paid a uh, uh, Hillary Clinton a hundred thousand for a speaking gig. That already. I swear, <laughs> there were some t- sometimes, like obviously the uh, any Gaza stuff is like, um, yeah. but there were a few times she she would like throw in stuff like that. I was like, actually, Goldman Sachs loves me, America. Yeah, <laughs> well, you think that's good? The, we're good. All right. Like the fracking, the like the fra- fracking stuff. Um, it's uh, just like every, but, th- you know, every primary, it's like, I hate fracking. I want to bury fracking. Let's shoot fracking into the sun. And then general election, I love fracking. I'll frack here. Mm-hmm. I'll drill into the thing. I'll drink your milkshake. I don't care. I'll, I'll do it. I'll, I'll use my right gun, milkshake. which I own, to do the fracking. <laughs> yeah, my gun that I own. She did get the the values, the changing question. Like, I, you know, your values changing. Yeah. The best answer she could give is like, yeah, I'm a politician. Move on. Yeah, I was um, uh, which isn't a good for a primary one, then. I'm running in a general election now, but uh, now it was better than the Fetterman answer about fracking. Um, which was not an answer. Which, which was, was not an answer. <laughs> and I guess in fairness to Fetterman, he had recently had a stroke. Like, to your point, like, it's just, it is a little, you know, it's, it, it's, they're, they're playing what we all wanted, <laughs> which is generic Democrat. I didn't want that. Uh, um, well, I know, but I know, but you know what I mean. Don't include like, me. As instead of Biden, the best candidate is generic Democrat, and it seems like that's really what it, they're going for, which is just like, yeah, Goldman Sachs lo- loves me, and I, uh, I own guns too, but also we need to give everybody the opportunity to have health care and uh, like all the things. So it's like very middle of the road. And uh, I would also like to, uh, what you were talking about earlier, like to have her say, hey, you know, I understand you're struggling for this reason or this reason. I I maybe we don't respond uh, to the people as much as we should. All the things that you'd want somebody to say, that would be nice. I don't think that's in the cards for this particular candidate um, uh, or this particular election, unfortunately, although no. we did get Trump to call her a Marxist. So we that sure was did. fun. And that, that was, was in fun. the first five minutes. Really? Right yeah, out, of the, out of the gate. Yeah. I think perhaps right now 
we should take a break for ads. I knew it. Sweet Kentucky Charlie, businesses can be hard. So much sawdust to purchase. Pounds and pounds of the stuff. But Cody has to eat something. Am I right? I am. I'm right. And listen, the last thing anyone wants to worry about is their business finances. Am I also right? Thank you. That's why you should check out Found. They're an all-in-one business banking app that lets you handle all your financial tasks, like managing money, tracking spending, invoicing clients, and even handling those taxes. Right off all that terrarium gravel and litter. All from one easy-to-use app. Found has no hidden fees, no maintenance fees, no balance minimums. No wonder they have 30,000 positive customer reviews. Like this one from Google Play Store saying, quote, helps you automate and calculate a lot of things you'd have to do yourself before, giving you more time to focus on other aspects that matter. <laughs> I love matter. It's literally everywhere and everything. Tax season is right around the corner. Get ready with Found, why don't ya? Stop getting lost in countless fine apps apps and try Found for free at found.com slash more news. Again, sign up for Found for free today at F-O-U-N-D dot com slash more news. Found is a financial technology company, not a bank. Banking services are provided by Piermont Bank, member FDIC. Found's core features are free. They also offer an optional paid product, Found Plus. And yeah, I am right. Don't you know that by now? And we're back from those ads. How fun. You know, I was uh, heating up my tea and adding more soda water to my glass, and I heard you guys talking about how Oh, I think it was Cody specifically. He says, honestly, after the last debate, this one just wasn't very exciting. Fell and flat. I agree. Thank it you. Felt flat. I was like, there were not, we're not asking any of the, either of them to step down as the candidate. Nothing dramatic no, like that. Nobody, nobody like just stopped talking <laughs> for Mid-sentence. way too long. It, it there was no it firing debates about golf. Yeah, there, it was like it end. It seems to. It seems to. I haven't checked the discourse. It seems to have ended without either side asking their candidate to step down, and then having to force them to step down after they say they'll only step down if God intervenes. And I think that that's just a huge disappointment in terms of modern presidential debates. This was very uneventful. Like I would say. In terms of modern presidential debates, this was the least eventful of all of them in the modern era. Of which the, where I'm, there have been two? There have been two of them, yes. Yeah. But this was by far the least eventful. What else Stepping stood out up. to us? What else jumped out tonight? Called her a Marxist. He tried to say that Tim Walls was weird, too. But yeah, then he, like, he did. But he like, forgot about it. He was like, I should mention Tim Walls. He didn't use the word weird. I forget he said the phrasing. he's really out of it. Really I, out of it. I yeah, jotted right. that yeah. one down. Yeah, really he's out of, it. out of it. That's right, Donald. He's that felt out of it. Desperate. That was as he started to. She really started to get under his skin around that moment where uh-huh. he started pulling out stuff, and it's like, okay. Uh, I glad. I was glad she did call out. She's like, you know, you're not debating Joe Biden up on this stage. That was nice. That was there good. were a few moments like few moments where she like said that. some things that we were for weeks have been like, she should just say this, point this out. Did he say that she didn't know Joe Biden? Didn't know the gentleman he did say is that. what I wrote uh, down. He said she doesn't even know him. I and don't... that he hates her. And that he hates her. Which... So which one is it? Oh, concepts of a plan. That was a fun moment for us all. I think we could relish in that. Now, when he was president, he was about to announce a health care plan in two weeks, I think he said in 2017 or something, mm, and then just did. never did. And he never so did. he's been developing this like plan that'll change everything. The master for... plan. Yeah. Yes or no, you still do not have a plan. I have concepts of a plan. I'm not president right now. But if we come up with something, I would only change it if we come up with something that's better and less expensive. And there are concepts and options we, we have to do that, and you'll be hearing about it in the not too distant future. Bullshit. You're gonna hear about it. <laughs> You're gonna hear. Eight about years in the making. <laughs> oh my gosh! 
I mean, my that goodness, felt, like really embarrassing to me because he obviously looks like he's caught, like, uh, you know, but yeah, who's well, to whenever, say how that <laughs> whenever he doesn't know what he's talking about or what to say, he's going to say, yeah, we've got concepts of a plan and you'll be hearing about it within a few weeks. He said that at the very beginning. Again, eight years you ago. He's like, yeah, before okay, I'll, you go to a fucking I'll have, I'll have it. It's so funny <laughs> to be like, well, I'm not president now. You were. And you are running for president. You're running for. Well, you're well, obviously, yeah, debate. you're running for president. So you should think about this stuff. You were the president. So you should have I'm not had gonna thought do about that. this stuff. I'm not going to do that work unless I'm elected. You spent at least half a year trying to repeal Obamacare and replace it with literally nothing. What is your deal, man? We could talk about the moderators as well, by the way, um, because the right wing reaction to this is that this is all ABC News's fault for fact checking him, but not her. It was so um, mild. Um, the th even the fact, like the fact that they did do sometimes, like, oh, good, they finally said something. Yeah, but, they like, said it was uh, really you lost mild. the election when he said he won it. They said that you lost the election and you can't kill a baby. They said it's not it's not legal to kill a baby, <laughs> is what they said. Like, I do think that they pressed him on more hard questions than her. He's a more frequent liar. He is a more frequent liar. That is the other side of it. But you you could press her a bit more on some things. I think that that's true, but this, it, these are the bigger issues. Uh, so it's, it's tough. I know I, but, and like we're always chasing this semblance of fairness. You don't need to per like, if he lies more, you're going to have to fact check him more. You're not, there's not a quota where you're like, well, we got to make sure to fact check 10 of each of their statements. Well, he's going to have 10 in the first five minutes and she's going to have 10, maybe the whole time. Does that is that equal treatment or is that overweighting one side because one is a huge like I'm pathological gonna... liar? I'd also plug real quick our episode this week that'll come out in a day or two. It is also about a lot of this where uh -huh. you're kind of overweighting this one side and trying to over overly fact check the Democrats, for example, because you know that. He's going to go up on stage and say that they're eating cats and dogs. But meanwhile, Trump got more speaking time. He spoke for more than five minutes more than Kamala Harris did. 42 minutes, 52 seconds to 37 and he minutes, was 36 really, seconds. He really used those minutes well. Yeah. Yes, well, he did. People could say that that benefits her, but he did get to talk. He got five right, minutes exactly, more yeah. microphone time, and that's what he decided to do with it. Let me see if this has a bunch uh, of what we're looking for in uh, here where they talked about race or sh uh, uh, they asked Trump about race and I think credit to them for asking this question. Most people would say like, well, we're not going to touch that. That's beneath. I want to move on now to race and politics in this country. Mr. President, you recently said of Vice President Harris, quote, I didn't know she was black until a number of years ago when she happened to turn black and now she wants to be known as black. What I want to ask fuck? a bigger picture question here tonight. Why do you believe it's appropriate to weigh in on the racial identity of your opponent? I don't, and I don't care. I don't care what she is. I don't care. Uh, you make a big deal out of something, I couldn't care less. Whatever she wants to be is okay with me. What? But those were your words, so I'm I asking. I don't know, I don't know. I mean, all I can say is I read where she was not black, that she put out, and I'll say that. And then I read that she was black, and that's okay. Either one was okay with me. That's up to her. That this is what you do to that when you're her. Just be like, yep, okay, that's that guy. She yeah. put it out? What? She put it out. She um, put it out. Did it's he so say so that, Even that, what he's so, referring to. It, well, so it could be two things, because he said that she put out, as in, like, she put that out. That's what she put out. Or the more misogynistic thing where like she put out to to get her job which is what they are saying as well so like it's maybe kind it's of like a double... crossed wires there or something like that but i i mean not that it matters this doesn't change i don't know how it affects people on the cusp but the, the a conversation the conversation is that she campaigned as being indian when it benefited her and she'll campaign as being black they all 
do know that she's both, but she is just, both. Of right. course, you would do that. Right, right. And then it's like, but why does it have to be about any of it? I'm like, I don't know. Why does it have to be about him being a fucking billionaire businessman? Why does it have to be about anybody's fucking identity? Here I go swearing again. Some people like it, um, but you know, she's connecting like, with that's different the voters. Question. And... That is the question. That is the fucking. T- that is the talking point. Um, that either was satisfactorily answered to some people or horrifically answered to the rest of us. Yeah. Well, so also, like, you know, it's fine and good to, like, get to know the candidate. Interest. I mean, it's not interesting. It frustrates me. I've gotten into a lot of, like, things about this specific talking point. Like, if you want to criticize Kamala about some policy thing, okay, let's talk about that or you know whatever but this is such fuck it's just bullshit it's she's it's, also barely brought it up she she's talk barely about it. and it's the media it's other people but like it's just so yucky is this also i mean we're three white people sitting here talking about this but i know that there's that that's a complicated just to being being a mixed race identity in america alone comes with its all a whole subset of things that i can't even begin to wrap my mind around uh, you know, between being two different types of min- minorities, and she's both. She gets to claim both. She can talk about her Indian heritage. She can talk about her black heritage. But he brought this on himself because he brought it up. He brought it up, and then when he's asked about it, he says, I don't care. And then when re- when read his quote and s- told those are your words. He says, I don't know. <laughs> That's a tear. Like, yeah, I don't know what that. Right. It, I mean, he I... doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't care. That's correct. But not in the way he's trying to say, he doesn't care that he says whatever. And people get mad. He doesn't care. That he can say whatever about a race. And then everyone's mad and weird about it. And like asking him about it. And he's like, I don't, I don't know. Did I say that? Well, Does it matter? I... Who cares? He doesn't care. I'm Cause he just says whatever. I'm echo. Even that answer kind of echoes the conversations when I've pressed people about this to say like, I don't care. I just, I don't know. I think it's interesting that Uh I'm just saying that in terms of an answer to a lot of people, they're like, yep, that's all checks out to me. I would ask those people if they are satisfied with the answer. I don't care. Are they satisfied with him being told what he said and him saying, I don't know in response to a direct quote from what he said. Sure. Is that a satisfactory answer? Because uh, it sounds like maybe he doesn't say anything that he thinks or remembers. I'm obviously arguing this with is people a, it, who it, are elsewhere. I'm also <laughs> inflating this. This was just a thought that I had that it sparked something in me because this is a conversation I've had so many times. I'm like, yeah. yep, know how that well, one goes. If they don't care, they should stop bringing it up so much. It's just that there's not much to bring up from there. It's like we, the main thing, you know? What are you talking about? We haven't talked about how we're doing transgender operations on illegal aliens in prison yet. Yeah. There's lots what did that clip that. say? We're not I didn't listen about... to that. Thing. It was about, I mean, I'll play, the, I just have the snippet, but they were talking, uh, Trump was trying to paint Democrats as radical on the issue of abortion. Right. Um, he was trying to turn the tables since mm. the Republicans are the ones who are, in fact, radical on it based on the way people think <laughs> let's say this now she wants to do transgender operations on illegal aliens that are in prison this is a radical left liberal that would do this and where he got that from was apparently her saying that she would support uh health care for inmates or whatever health care for inmates but um, he didn't say I, I, I mean right like we we can only assume that that is that's where he's getting that that that's he's trying to say yes she would support health care for inmates because inmates get health care because you were imprisoning them so you gotta so let you them go to a doctor them. make sure yeah. they go to the doctor uh, give them uh, health care and so he is extrapolating from that right. now she's gonna force transgender operations on illegal aliens who I hate but who, we're putting yeah. but they shouldn't have uh, those operations we're putting them in prison and making them do this uh, and I'm not going to explain how I ate a zed off that well why would he explain anything ever when you ask him about it he says I don't know. <laughs> I mean, he's, a few days ago, he was like, yeah, you, your kid goes to school, and two days later, they, they had some surgery or whatever. Like, he just says, he knows he's whatever. supposed to talk he'll about. Whatever, he'll say whatever. He knows he's supposed to talk about 
transgenderism and they're forcing it on you and the surgeries, all this stuff. He knows he's supposed to say stuff like that. So he did that. I'm sure everyone heard that at home and was like, wow, I can't let Kamala Harris be the president because she wants to do transgender surgeries on immigrants in prison. I'm sure that's the that's the the kitchen table conversation going on in America. I do want to call out when she was talking about I forget even what the context was. And uh, she mentioned his rallies. Now he lies about his rallies. And then the question went to Trump and he was like, OK, first, let me respond to the rallies. And he responded yeah. only about the rallies. <laughs> um, like it all uh, kind of blends together and it's impossible to try to get a handle on it. And like, it's no wonder he can't remember the things he says because he says so much. and he just doesn't, says it. Like, because there was that moment where he's like, I don't remember what I said about Kamala's race. Who knows? And then uh, uh, David Muir read a bunch of quotes he'd said where he seemed recently to acknowledge that he had lost the 2020 election like a couple of quotes and he he gave an interview where he said i lost by a whisker and then at first he was like did i that who said that did i say that or whatever and then when it was like you said that sir he's like well it was sarcastic no i didn't i didn't lost i won big or whatever he doesn't know yeah like obviously it's easy and fun for me i guess to like play a bunch of clips where trump sounds that way and be like look at this guy but like, right? We're almost like done a, an hour long podcast, and we're like, let, uh, like let this land. He said this thing, and this like the it's eighth on our list to play. I know. There's just yeah. too it's much. It's dizzying. It's dizzying, and he wasn't even in his best form tonight. Um, um, no, oh, I would argue tired. he was. Uh, you would argue I mean, he that's, was. That's his I mean, don't know. Big he form. seemed. She got under his skin, so he was ramping up but he was losing composure he started off a little bit more composed yeah and she started out a little bit nervous and she settled did. into it I she think. did she found her stride she, yeah, she got there. took being, a few minutes i did not like when she repeated the most lethal, lethal military military in the world. yeah, yeah. Not great. Yeah. Oh, she's playing the hits for What's again that a hit? an audience. Well, not to us, but she's not to talking who? to us. I mean, other people. I, you know, I don't. I'm, You're in a bubble, Katie. I, a lot like, of people like that like, feels like, like um that feels bipartisan to me. Is it's a bipartisan that... thing that people like. I know, like I know that we have all of our things that we would say about it, but. I I would bet, um, not money, cause, come on, um, but I would bet that Five. most people, like the median voter here is like the most lethal military, and they're like, yeah, we got to have that. That's just what people think, I think. Um, like, again, she's like, she's talking to people who aren't us, and you feel ignored because of your beliefs, <laughs> and they aren't going to be necessarily represented or spoken to by a mainstream politician in either party. I understand but that. Also but the Democratic I'm party. saying specifically that phrase pissed off a lot of people that she continues to not reach out to me. I'm we spent a lot of time talking about Donald Trump this evening, so I am just giving air to the things that specifically bothered me. Um and that was a big one. Again, oh, yeah. I I a, a lot of people that listen to this show, not all of them, but a lot of people um also feel similarly very disenfranchised by this party and i think it's important to note uh yeah i'm i would not disagree with that um it's just at this point i'm like yep yeah i mean the the it out of all the things to repeat um from the dnc speech and there were other you know things the, the some of the uh, economic plans but right like the phrases of most lethal military and then like the debunked claims of rape on October 7th. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. those kinds of key things being repeated. I, I like, I don't want to be like, well, I guess you got to do that. Like, do you have to do that? You got to say that one. Right. Like, cause oh, no, you don't have to you. say any of it. Yeah. You don't um, have to say it that. It just no. makes, you don't have to say any of it. It's, it sucks. I, I don't like, yeah, I don't want to, I, I, to be clear, I'm not like, it's fine. It's what you got to say. It sucks. It feels um, beyond just ignoring a sizable chunk of, the people well, especially that after she's like, hoping to vote for that her. was like one of the lines of the DNC that like got a lot of like 
That's pushback what I'm saying. Too. That's what I'm saying and specifically. Like leaning into it. Yeah. yeah that's it. And in. like that doesn't feel it, that's what I mean by it's hard to like yeah, I think she held her own and she got under his skin and she taunted him in a way that distracted him and blah 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 all of that and there were a few things but the, I just I especially towards the end of the evening like that I just was like damn it. Um, it's the maintaining of the status quo, the maintaining of the neoliberal machine, as it were, um, which sucks. At one point said that in regards to different differing statements, they've uh, both he and his vice presidential candidate, J.D. Vance, uh, have said about abortion. He said, well, J.D. and I don't discuss it. And then he said, it doesn't matter if we talk. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I don't. I mean, maybe he it's a different dynamic. Seems a little freaked out about um, uh, I think the abortion questions. Uh, yeah, I know he knows that it's a terrible issue for him. It's why he said the thing the one day about the the vote, and then changed his mind the next day because he got pushback from what the people that are doing. It. He said something tonight that was like I don't know, I forget what he said specifically. That she's a but, Marxist, or that he no, is no, vice no, it's about this. Talk. That I was like, that is just it in a nutshell. Of like, yeah, I had to do this thing, but mm -hmm. like, I don't, I'm not against abortion. I just think it should be up to the states, and that is the only talking point he. Oh yeah, has it's that like it's that like it doesn't here. matter what he thinks. It's because the states have the power now. And but that's at what least the thing is, it was really clearly laid out the ramifications of what this means, practically speaking, for people in those individual states. And he said, like, well, look, it's going to sort itself out. It's going to get people are voting now. He's basically saying, like, it's going to get fixed. The states are going to fix it. They're all going to people mm -hmm. are going to be mad enough to show up and vote. But like that, first off, maybe, maybe that ultimately, certainly in some states, you can't guarantee that it's all of them. But in the meantime, people's lives mm. are being ruined. People well, are yeah, dying. Yeah. People are being arrested. It's in it's unbelievable and it also seems like he gets let off the hook yeah where he's like well i wouldn't say that i would sign a national abortion ban even though yes you would uh it's been strongly suggested in the past and then they're like well well what about what jd vance has said and he's like i don't talk to that, <laughs> that <laughs> who? Who? sorry who no <laughs> like but you mean rfk no. yeah. like <laughs> like uh uh you know obviously Kamala Harris is going to refer to it, them as Trump abortion bans in specific states. But, like, you know, the press shouldn't let him off the hook because that's kind of what they are, because you did this thing and that's why you did it. That's why you put these people on there. Like, it is, you know, he wants to be like, well, I believe in the exceptions. Like, well, it doesn't give a shit what you it doesn't specifically matter. believe yeah. because you put people on the Supreme you... Court who are going to allow. Yeah. And you said women should be punished. You said you said that. I know, like, fact Nobody check. Well, he changed later. his mind. He, he said that women should be punished for this. That is what he said. Yeah. Get he, it together, he opened, he opened this Pandora's box. Also, just. He's trying to distance um, himself from it. He's trying to distance himself from Project 2025, uh, which is very frustrating. Um, well, he didn't read Project 2025, but he does know that there's some good stuff in there and some bad stuff. But he didn't read it, and he's not going to read it. So I'm, then you yeah. can't ask him about it. I'm like, intentionally not reading it, so it can't permeate my brain and give me good or terrible ideas. Or bad. Depending on what it, you think. Yeah. It's got both. I don't know. It's... What a guy. Oh, he took credit for uh, making all those masks, too. Which ones? The masks that don't work. <laughs> no, we, we sent gowns and masks all over the world. No one's given us credit for what for we the, did. For giving them the masks that uh, we hate them, don't we, folks? We're going to ban them. But we made them, and we sent them out for everybody. I mean, yeah, there's a bunch of stuff we couldn't even talk. I mean, he referred to he he did the same thing where he says, oh, they take, they take the baby out, and then what are we going to do with the baby, which he... It was saying that the former governor of West Virginia said that, but it was a former governor of Virginia who didn't say that, but he's suggesting that that's yeah. the thing. Um, everything he did on January 6th was perfect. We just, this is lightning round of. <laughs> that, oh, they don't, they could sign a bill. They could sign a bill tomorrow. They don't need bills. Referring to the bill. They don't need bills. They could sign a bill tomorrow. Uh, I like that. Oh, right. That was his reason for not backing the bill that would have done Eventually the thing he, he got wants. to it. Where it's like, yeah. well, they don't need the bill. They could just sign a bill tomorrow. Excellent that was point. about immigration, his answer to that? 
Really? It's about the immigration bill. Uh, I mean, it was his answer. He's, he's it was like, like, they could executive order do it, so they don't need the bill. Okay, my brain thought he was answering something else when he I said mean, he that. He was thing. forgiven probably. by Mr. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, so been the I'm very sorry, end. I didn't keep. But again, uh, that's not answering the other part. He said he'd stop both of the wars uh, before he's even president. Yeah, that's telling. That's weird. But also, Why would you say that? That's because you already have a deal with Netanyahu, and he's holding out until you Interesting learned, blah, blah, theory blah, blah, there blah, blah. from the news. Uh, uh, nobody ever talks about how Russia has nuclear weapons. Yeah, you're right. That that there nobody's was ever that talked about I that. I have never History heard that before. My nothing God, nothing ever happened because Why Russia had nuclear weapons. Why is anybody talking about the nuclear weapons in Russia? And oh, and world leaders are calling him all the time. They're calling him all the time. He's talking to them all the time. Is in what violation he said? of the Logan Act? Question mark. Seems like add it. it to the list of crimes you've done. Uh, yeah, yeah, just I, the I did fucking, some crimes. They call I, yeah, me. Yeah, but do they crimes. call me so. Uh, the people can't buy cereal, bacon, or eggs. People can't buy cereal, bacon, or eggs, which I assume uh, cost money. I haven't. Uh, I mean, God. Uh, pulling out of I think pulling out of Afghanistan was the most embarrassing thing that's ever happened in the country. I forget what he was for. He said something was the most embarrassing thing that's ever happened yeah, in the, the country. Yeah, the Afghanistan And uh, I, attack. whatever it was, whatever he said, it wasn't. No. <laughs> I can assure you it wasn't. Promise it was not. Even if it was somewhat embarrassing, I promise you it was not Not the most saying. embarrassing. Oh, he, um, uh, he didn't say black jobs. He made sure to specify the, the migrants will be taking jobs taken by African-Americans and Hispanics. Hispanics. He, he wanted to emphasize, I don't mean the jobs themselves are black, you, everyone. I mean that they're just the jobs that you have to have. He doesn't get the point at all. No. Uh, it, he doesn't uh, get it at all. No, he doesn't. He was really mad, and he was like, they come up with things like what she just said, and then he continued on. I thought that was really funny. He couldn't, like, pinpoint what she said. She w- oh, He, like, forgot what she was saying. He said terror real weird. He did say sudden. terror real weird. <laughs> terror. I liked when uh, Vice President Harris talked about the sacred Camp David. I don't give a shit about Ooh. Camp David. Kamala, oh, what yeah. You, what, like, Can you about? believe they invited He brought the terrorists. Taliban. Oh, my gosh. The Taliban probably shouldn't be there. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, it's like, I don't know. Um, I don't know. Sense. That uh, was another moment Harris. where I was there like. There have been, like, war criminals and, and butchers at, at Camp David. Uh, I don't care. <laughs> I also like his, like, his attacks on, like, her flip-flopping where it's like, yeah, she, uh, uh, she's a flip-flopper. And she wants to, she wants to take away your guns. And now she doesn't. So that's actually good then, right? I guess he's trying to point that you can't trust her that to whatever she says, it's not what she means. I like when uh they brought up Project 2025. Um, he obviously it was funny that he said he didn't read it, and also there's good and bad stuff in there. Um, but also he said, um, everybody knows what I'm gonna do. What? Great, great that campaigning. You've got concepts. Of <laughs> everybody knows what I'm gonna do. He's got concepts of ideas. Um, <laughs> yeah, everybody knows what I'm gonna do except for these things, which I'm working these things on which, very diligently. And I know you keep asking me about them, and I know that I've said you'll get a plan in two weeks for eight years. But there'll be a plan in two weeks. And I'm going to formulate a thought bubble. And that thought bubble is going to turn into a whisper. And it's going to turn into an idea. And we're going to sign that idea into law, into beautiful, beautiful law. Do you guys think we've done it? I think we've done it. I just wanted to make sure we got all the- I want to shout out our- uh, editor who is going to Nick who's going oh to be goodness. working on this all night so thanks Nick yeah Nick put I'm the, trying to get this it will be giving you more later. work but put an applause uh, put an applause sound effect in there for you this is for you <laughs> all right guys we did it we arrived at the end of the show once yeah. again quick reminder this is the episode of even more news this week. <laughs> Some more news will be coming. We also love you very much. Much.